Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool arcade game video for you this evening. We've got a really special one in today. This is Atari's 1980 Warlords. And as you can see, it's the cool cocktail version. This is a very smooth game. Fairly desirable. And uh, it's one of the rare cases where it's pretty much agreed that the cocktail version is better than the upright version. How could that possibly be? Well, we're going to play it and see. Do you remember seeing one of these back in the day? The cool cocktail version? Do you remember seeing the cool upright version? I'd like to get one of those too, but I uh, haven't came across one yet. This actually doesn't belong to us. This was, uh, we're fixing this for a gentleman, so we've, uh, we've got it all up and running. Now, if you didn't see the repair video, then go check that out. We, uh, we filmed a video of us repairing it and getting it back doing its thing and back to its former glory. And uh, much hilarity ensued. <laughs> so we, uh, we got it up and running good. We're going to test it a little bit, make sure everything works right. But these were really cool because four people could play at once. And it made sense, like the way the game's designed with the, uh, with the uh, castles and everything. It just it works really well like that so the upright was a one or two player version and then the cocktail is a one through four player version and the upright was actually black and white but it had like a uh, color overlay that went over the monitor to make it uh, the castles have color the and the game board actually sent out a black and white signal but when it, if you put the exact same game board in the cocktail version the cocktail version is wired in such a way that it gets a color signal from the same game board. So the, it's really unique that the uh, the game board put out a black and white uh, video signal and it also put out a full color video signal. The upright version had a 22 inch black and white monitor um, and the um, kind of like uh, with the with the mirror and everything kind of like they did in Space Invaders. Um, different company but same uh, kind of uh, effect. Uh, and then the the cocktail version had a full color monitor. They did the like I said they did the exact same thing with Space Invaders. In Space Invaders, the upright uh, the upright version of one and two was black and white, and then there was a sit down version that had a color monitor in it that was called Space Invaders Two. But they actually used different game boards. But this one uses the exact same game board in the upright or the cocktail, and it puts out two sets of video. So just an interesting little fact. Um, very cool game, and look what I have found. You know, we have a video game store. This is a original Atari Warlords cartridge. So this is the same game, but for the Atari 2600. So we're going to check this out, too. Um, but we got Big Papa here. <laughs> and the home version. So let's see what the home version uh, looked like. They always had such cool artwork on the boxes, didn't they? So you got this guy. He's a knight, obviously. You can see a little catapult, and there's a castle. You know, they're showing you how it was. And it says Atari, a Warner Communications company. It's a special feature. You know, stuff like that always amazes me. So they came up with this, and then somebody was like, eh kind of needs something else. Can you put maybe special feature at the bottom? Maybe that'll maybe that'll make them buy it. So anyway, you re if you remember on the Atari, you, put, you have a little uh, a little game select lever. So games 1 through 5 catch lightning ball, 6 uh, through 10 were catch fireball, 11 through 15 were ricochet the lightning ball, 16 through 23 were ricochet the fireball one to four players. Use your paddle controllers with this game program cartridge. I wonder how the, uh, the paddles look slightly different. Look, special feature. This game program contains additional versions for young children. And that's what the special feature stood for. And this says 81. So the arcade version came out in 80. And this, at least this version of it was 81. There may have been other ones before that. Program Contents 1981 Atari. 
Man, that's some cool stuff. Look at this. Game program was trademarked. Wow. How'd they pull that off? Okay, and then inside of the box you would have found... The box was, uh... You know, had, had a little cardboard thing inside, bent inside of it so that it would actually kind of hold the, uh, the cartridge in there in a certain spot. And you would get this game program cartridge limited 90 day warranty. Uh, 90 days, blah, 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 blah. Atari's sole obligation will be to replace the cartridge free of charge on receipt of the cartridge. Charges prepaid if mailed or shipped with proof of date of purchase at either the retail store where the cartridge was purchased or at one of the Atari regional service centers listed below. There was one in Sunnyvale, California, Rolling Meadows, Illinois, Somerset, New Jersey, and Arlington, Texas. This warranty shall not be applied if the cartridge has been misused or shows sign of excessive wear, okay? Or if it has been damaged by being used with any products not supplied by Atari or has been damaged by being serviced or modified by anyone other than an Atari Regional Service Center. Okay. And then uh, it always came with the little catalog where they show you all the different games that you could buy. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Just a little instruction book. So I thought what we would do is we'll read, we will read the arcade version because it was first, and then we'll come back over here and we'll read this and see see how imaginative Atari was. Okay, that ought to be cool. So you've got this very nice logo on the glass, and by the way, I should just mention, isn't that a great looking game? I mean, it just looks good. It's very well designed as far as aesthetically. Okay, instructions: one to four players. Insert coin. Power stone. Press and hold stone. Capture a fireball on your shield so the power stone is the flashing button. Press and hold stone will capture, capture a fireball on your shield. If you release the stone, it'll catapult your captured fireball toward an opponent. Press your player start. Scoring one and two player competition. Hit any castle, you get 125 points. Destroy any warlord, you get 1,000 points. Destroy any black knight. Uh, you get 2,500 points. Surviving the Warlord receives extra points equals the level achieved times 5,000. Okay, whatever. Let's look on this side. So it's exactly the same. All right, so that was the arcade setup. So that was pretty much the, the extent of the story or whatever in the arcade setup, right? But for the home version now, they had to make they had to do things differently, right? So you've got this another awesome painting. They were great at that. And here's their stories. It says introduction. Once, long ago, in a distant land lived a king named Frederick. He took very good care of his subjects and pretty much let the kingdom run itself. One day, King Frederick and his wife Queen Christina decided to start a family. One day, to their, surprise, to their surprise, Queen Christina soon gave birth to quadruplets, four healthy sons all at once. The king and queen were overwhelmed, but more so the queen. The years passed quickly, and Frederick's sons, Dominic, Marcus, Felipe, and Restivo, grew to be strong young men, but they were nothing like their kind and peaceful father. They were just the opposite. The four sons of King Frederick fought constantly over anything and everything. Their fighting was so fierce that even the normally unconcerned Frederick became concerned. Left to his violent and competitive sons, his peaceful kingdom could very well be destroyed after he was gone, or perhaps even sooner. Remember, he took very good care of his subjects and pretty much let the kingdom run itself. The solution King Frederick decided upon was drastic, but he knew it had to be. Dominic, Marcus, Felipe, and Restivo were banished from their homeland and sent far away to a forbidden land. There they became warlords, dividing their newly acquired territory into four equal sectors, which incidentally was the first and last thing they ever agreed upon. 
Then they they then took to building their own castles, after which the battle the battling resumed and never ended. They stopped catapulting fireballs and lightning balls at one another, only long enough to rebuild their damaged and war-torn castles. After repairs were made, the fighting always began again with renewed ferocity. So King Frederick's warlords have been battling for many centuries, and now it's up to you to carry on their long-standing feud. Okay. Dominic, Marcus, Felipe, and Restivo have been locked inside this game program. Trademark. They've stored up enough fireballs and lightning balls so that they'll never run out. And neither will you. They can hardly wait to do battle. So good luck. You're in for some fierce competition. Now, I will say one thing. There is no doubt this game still works. So they're right about that. There are enough fireballs inside this game to work for forever. The things just keep on going. Thing, I guess it's 38 years old now and it still works. So this is what it looks like on the Atari. Battle objective. The object of the battle is destroy the other three warlords before your warlord is destroyed. Use the paddle controller to protect your castle and your warlord. Your warlord is located inside the castle as shown in figure one. Turn the knob on the controller to move your shield around your castle and block the ball. It's not a ball, is it? That was a, well, I guess it's a fireball. When you miss the ball, it, it knocks out the bricks of your castle. As your castle breaks down, it becomes possible for the ball to hit your warlord, at which time you're out of the battle. Every, each battle ends when only one warlord remains on the playfield. The first person or computer player to win five battles wins the war. I don't think there's anything like that in the arcade version. Note that a shield controlled by the computer will move slower than a shield controlled by a human player. To compensate for this fact, <laughs> yeah, the computer player and shield have the power to throw the ball in unexpected directions. Also, when a warlord has been killed, his ghost will haunt the battlefield. If the ball comes near, the ghost may actually hit the ball in a new direction. If you look closely, you may even catch a glimpse of the ghost and his shield. Of the 23 games in Warlords, each game has a fast lightning or slow fireball speed. Okay, so that's not... I don't think that's in the, uh, in the arcade version either. So, they made it a little bit different. TV type switch. Set the switch to color if you have a color television set. Set it to black and white to play the game in black and white. Game variations. Helpful hints. Here we go. Well, this is what we need. When you first start playing Warlords, choose games with slow ball speed. Fireball. Okay, I will. This will help you get the feel of the game faster. Also, there are certain positions in which the ball always comes off your shield at the same angle or in the same direction. Learn these positions and use them to your advantage against your opponents. Don't be too predictable. If you attempt to shoot from the same angle or from the same position too often, your opponents will know what to expect and will nearly always be able to block your shots. Vary your attacks to keep the others off guard. Study your opponent's weaknesses. You can learn a lot by studying the habits of the enemy. You may find, for example, that one of your opponents moves very well in one direction when attempting to block shots, but has trouble moving in the opposite direction. Obviously, then, you want to concentrate on the direction he or she has trouble moving to. Team competition. You will find that four-player games are terrific because the action is fierce and extremely competitive. You may even want to create teams and battle for the best cumulative score. All right, so that's that. What do you think? All right, so let's set up the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. I got to basically play all four uh, corners just to make sure that the pot works good enough and all that. Okay, so basically you just try to protect your castle. So we're going to play it. It's much, 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 much more fun though if you have more than one player. But I'm the only one here right now. So y'all are just going to have to make do. I used to play this on the Atari a little bit, but like typical, this is not my best game. So we'll we'll see. Just imagine you're walking up to this for the first time in the arcade and putting your quarter in. This is exactly what it would be like. Quite 
somebody throw it at me first. Come on. Come on now. I keep hitting myself with when I'm throwing it. Like that. sucker already breaking through look at them I think they're cheating stay away from my glory hole myself <sighs> I did get the high score though apparently I'm the best person that's played this in a hundred years or 30 years all right that's player one let's get over and try out player two or they're not really called player one and player two it's just left player right player and there's one on each side so Let's try this one, since he was the one that won. Look, he's got the best castle left. Maybe this one's rigged up. Don't do it. Look at him. You see how he did me? He did me wrong. I got to get better at throwing the fireball, too, after I capture it. Yeah, that was better. going to be a problem. I think I'm in trouble. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm exposed, people. I'm exposed. Oh, yeah. Let's throw another fireball into the mix. I was doing so well with one. Man, I thought I had him. Nope, he had me. <laughs> All right, moving on around. Moving on around. What do you think? I think it's probably fine for y'all to stay where you're at, right? I'm going to be over here. corner I'm at. Mm. Mm. Oh man, how'd I miss? 
I wonder if certain ones are easier, like if the green guy is easier to beat. Me every time. That dragon is very unfair. I'm not so sure that catching it is all that great of an idea. <laughs> I think I'd rather just bounce it. When you catch it, it deteriorates your wall. And it, to me, it doesn't seem like it does much more damage. So close, so close. Okay. Now we're going to do this one. This guy keeps winning, so. I'm sure this is the better position. Must be. Watch him. Watch what he does. Look, he turns, waits till he gets over here to me, and then spits. It ain't right, man. It ain't right. Keep in mind, this is still just Pong, basically. It's just somebody came up with a really creative Pong. Mm.
already a hole. There's already a hole, people. Look at him. Look at him. They're trying to kill me. Oh. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. It's getting wild around you. Come on now. Come on now. All right, let's play again. It's fairly fun. I guess I should be keeping track of my score. I got 2,000 points. Let's see, what's the high score say? I got 12,000 on that one because I got to the second board. Look at him. Look at him. I know he's going to do it. Look at him. He's trying to break my defenses down. Look at him. for uh oh look at him you see how he did me it's like they're trying to take my quarter hmm <laughs> well I would suck at tennis Trouble man, I'm in trouble man. Ah, so close. 
Well, folks, there you have it. That is Atari's really cool Warlords. Like I said, much more fun if there's actual human players playing it. But what can you do? I got 12,000 that time. So my high score is 12,125. Boy, I'm bad. I mean, you know, in a good way. <laughs> now, like I said, this isn't for sale. This isn't ours. We're just fixing this for a gentleman. So it's going back to him. Now that we know that it works and everything, everything's cool, he can put it back in his collection and enjoy it. So I hope he, uh, I hope he gets it back soon. So... You will not be able to see this for sale or anything, but if you are looking for a game for sale, go check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com, and you can see the games that we do have available for sale on our website. You can also stop by and see all of the stuff that we're working on or that we have in at the moment on, here uh, in our shop. By, uh, you can stop by. We're open every day except Sunday from 11 to 8, and we're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. And we've got a whole building full of stuff we're always working on and doing this and doing that. It's all we do all day long. Um, but now, if you're not local, so you can't come by, and you're not going to check out our website because you're not looking to buy, purchase one either, that's fine. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube. And every time we uh, get something cool like this in, we film a little video just to show it off a little bit. And uh, we kind of just want to preserve how these things were uh because in the future most of these will be gone so this video is digital so it'll probably live on longer than the machines actually will and people will remember what they looked like maybe they can make a reproduction or something so that future people will know about all of the cool crap we had to take a quarter so leave your comments below let us know what you think do you remember playing this back in the day did you play the upright one or the sit down one or did you did you hate the game was it not fun to you or did you have a have a good time playing it? What's your opinion? Leave your comments below and make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And uh, we will see you on the next video. That's Atari's Warlords.